Hey guys, just want to show you something I've been playing with a lot lately. Uh, this is my Vexlar camera, underwater camera for on ice. Pretty cool deal. What's really cool about it now is they've actually come up with a DVR recorder. So you load a little micro SD chip in the end of that and uh, you can record everything that's going on under the ice that you're witnessing on the screen. So you can either hit this little red button to, to fire it up and get it recording to the chip or it actually comes with a little remote that you can uh, you can actually just snap that on your suit, clip it on your suit, hit record, it'll go all day. So basically I've loaded a large chip into this, 32 gig I think or 64, one or the other, but more than enough chip that you can run the chip all day long. So I just basically put this down the hole, center the camera on my jig and hit record and let it go. I don't pay much attention to turning it off, turning it back on. I don't want to miss anything. And I have plenty of chip and I'll just let it run until the battery dies on the camera. Which I've fished the last few days and it's been six hours and still no problem with the battery. So pretty handy recording all the time. So you don't miss anything. So pretty cool. I've got some footage coming up now from when I was perch fishing uh, last week. Uh, pretty cool footage. A um, little bit tricky because we were in deep water and uh, the sun penetration wasn't great on the ice. So... Uh, but you'll still see why I enjoy using an underwater camera. So here we are set up. <clears throat> Just a little bit of background on, on what I'm fishing here. It's actually, you know, a, a mud flat, 16, 17 feet. Bottom's uh, mostly mud and sand. Uh, if When I pan the camera around, I can see the odd boulder, maybe the size of a basketball, not much bigger than that. But... Uh, the perch on that we're on here probably because they're eating uh, eating the bugs that come out of the mud. Uh, we started about eight o'clock, and by ten thirty, the bite was pretty much done. Um, probably a morning thing when the bugs almost exactly like at dusk when uh, when the bugs start to come out of the uh, the the bottom at dusk and in the morning, uh, the perch would come in and feed on them. So you can see uh, you can see some little shelves on the bottom and stuff, but nothing too dramatic at all. Pretty pretty barren land down there and, and when the fish actually left it was like wow okay well what's going to bring these fish back other than a food source that we couldn't control so uh it was really obviously going to be a morning and uh and a dust bite on this spot but they were pretty fired up you can see there's a pile of fish on this flat um that's the the snow drop tip of the maki plastics that's actually a, a jamie xl that's on there uh, a buddy of mine in Vermont, Jamie, James Vladidka, he, uh, he designed that bait for Mackey and, and it's, it's been working awesome for us so far this year. Uh, the perch are just chewing it, but, uh, pretty hardy. And, uh, if you've ever smelt an e-soil, that is pumped full of an e-soil, pretty distinct smell. So it's uh, like a black licorice smell works really good, but, uh, you can see that this guy's coming in at about 90 miles an hour just to chomp that. Oh, but he takes his time. But, uh, yeah, they, they were on that day. But uh, you can see them really moving around. Schools were coming in, going back. It, it was kind of a weird spot. I'd never fished there before. But they uh, they definitely were there first thing in the morning when I dropped the flasher in to see what we had underneath us. There was marks on the camera right away. With, or on the, on the flasher right away. I was like, wow, okay, is that fish? Or we got weeds here or what? But it was fish. And they, they didn't leave for about two hours. That was a nice fish. That was probably the best one I got, probably 12 and a half, 13, somewhere in there. <clears throat> but um, so just the benefits of an underwater camera. Really what you're learning mostly is your jigging technique. There you can actually see the fish being released up top. But uh, So if you, if you were to see what my hand was doing to make that jig bounce as much as it is on camera, you'd be shocked. I'm barely moving the rod whatsoever, and it actually really makes that bait come to life. So if you see somebody jigging like, you know, the foot snaps for panfish, that's a stretch because there's obviously no need to do that. They're, it's just barely hopping in my hand. Sometimes I'm just sitting there just kind of, I'll tap the line. I won't even move the rod, I'll just tap the line with my finger and it'll, that little bait will actually hop all over the place. I always love when they come and check out the camera. Now, distance wise, to give you an idea, like I said, we're 16, 18 feet of water and you'll see it'll go from black and white to color, black and white to color. And what that is, is light penetration coming through the ice to be able to, to make it color underneath. Once the clouds came over the sun, we went back to black and white. 
when this clouds would go away, we'd go back to color. It was just kind of neat how it worked throughout the morning on, on what we were actually seeing on the camera, color versus black and white. Now, that bait is eight feet away from the camera. So these perch that are in the foreground that look absolutely massive, they are a nice perch, but they're not three footers. <laughs> it's just that they're, they're that much closer to the camera than to where the bait is. And I'm led to believe the lake's fairly clear, but that's eight feet away. That's pretty good distance. You can see, you know, pretty much, you can see well past the bait as well. So you can probably see there maybe 12, 14 feet of distance between, uh, from the camera and what you're actually, your, your field of vision is. So pretty, pretty good look that day. It really depends on the water you're fishing. Actually, this is a pretty cool sequence. You see that thing falling down? This is every bass fisherman's dream to understand why fish eat Senkos. That little piece of, I don't even know what it was, but it's just falling straight down calmly. And this perch comes from a mile to come and see this thing. And what does he have to do to it? He has to eat it. He has to put it in his mouth, see what it is, and spit it back out. That's why bass eat Senkos. Just that slow fall. He, had, he came from a long way away to come and see what that was, and he actually ate it. So, and there he is staring at my bait and he won't come and eat it. Maybe if I just slow fall just the plastic down, he'd come over and eat it. But I think his buddy comes over here and eats it. And he was bigger than him anyway, so. And like I said, see those little hops? I am not, that might be a pretty big pull just to see if I can get him to move. But those hops are not big at all. Like I'm barely moving. Here comes his buddy. Yeah, no, he came from, <laughs> he came from a mile away, that dude. But yeah, minimal hops on the rod to make that happen. So here's a cloudy point where, you know, the sun was covered by clouds, so we jump back to black and white. Still see pretty good, no problem at all. And, and it really gives you an idea, you know, how the fish are reacting to your bait. And it's always interesting to watch fish underwater. Who doesn't want it? You know, people stare at aquariums forever. So basically I'm staring at an aquarium of what's actually happening underneath me. So underwater cameras are awesome if you're not moving around. If you know you're going to stay in one area for the day and you have a camera, I always set it up. Just it's a lot more interesting to see. But if I'm hole hopping, flasher 100% of the time. If I'm moving around, I don't think I'm going to be staying in a lot of, you know, I'm hole hopping, for, you know, within six or seven holes for the day, I'll go with the flasher. But if I know I'm camping for the day and I know there's going to be fish underneath me in this area, down goes the camera and the flasher will sit. These guys are fired up. There you go. So, anyways... If you get an opportunity to play with the camera, you're going to learn a lot about what's going on under the water. Any questions on this, of course, you can get me on Facebook, through our site, comment on the YouTube. I get back to you with anything you need to know about any of this stuff you've seen in any of these videos. Don't be shy. I'm always here to answer your question. Thanks.